Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights, here with Eddie Healy. Eddie's going to be an attorney pretty soon. He's uh, prepping for the bar. He's taking time out to talk about this stepped-up basis, which if you haven't heard about it, you probably don't need to hear about it unless <laughs> the current administration and the Congress uh, changes the rules. Uh, it's a rule that bears examination, but most collectors would hope <laughs> it does not get uh, taken away. So thanks, sponsors, Top Spinini Upper Deck, Heritage Auctions, Huckett and Scott Auctions, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Burbank Sports Cards, Compsy.com, and Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. Eddie, I would say the auction companies, my sponsors, would be most mm -hmm. affected by this, but everybody would. Welcome to the show, and uh, thanks for being that combination of uh, almost attorney and uh, <laughs> and uh, collector. We've talked about your the legacy of your dad and stuff like that, so I always enjoy talking to you. Tell us why you thought this would be an interesting topic. Thanks for having me on, Dr. Beckett. Yeah, so first of all, just to you know, reiterate what Steps Up Basis is, you know, the one liner would be that it's a readjustment of the the market value of an asset, a card that happens upon the death of the collector and when it's inherited. So, yeah, I thought it was interesting. A couple of things. The one episode I was on earlier talking about my dad's cards I, that happened after he passed away. So I got some experience with stepped up basis personally. But then in some of your podcasts and, and a couple of um, other collectors who've been on, they keep talking about wanting to to sell their cards before they pass away to bring in the financial benefit while they're alive. And the way stepped up basis works, depending upon how much appreciation your card may have had and then how long you've held it, I, I wasn't sure if that was necessarily the right thing to do. Maybe there's more benefits to to holding it and passing it on. So that's why I thought it was interesting to, to talk today. Okay. So if I have a card, let's say I'm your dad or I'm mm -hmm. the older guy and you're the younger guy. I, I have a card that's worth a hundred bucks now. If I were to sell it, and I've held it for a long time, longer than a year, so it's a capital gain. Then you might think, based on your tax bracket, that would be 20% capital gain. But no, if it's collectibles, the capital gains rate for long term is is 28%. So if I sell a card that's $100, that I have basically nothing in it. In fact, the IRS will take that position. You have a penny or zero in it if you can't prove that you bought it at some other price. So if that's the case, then I owe 28 bucks to the IRS if I sell it now and report it on my 1040, on my federal income tax. And there can be state considerations and other things. Okay, so the freebie that the stepped up basis has provided is that if I die and give it to you, I give you this $100 card that I have zero in, then if you sell it for $100, you pay no tax because you, in effect, got it for the stepped up basis of $100. So right now, like you said, some of the people that have come on, there's no real incentive to selling now when you get this free stepped up basis. So your heir is greatly benefited. And again, we're saying $100 could be $1,000, could be $100,000. It's whatever the collection is. But you're going to pay sooner or later. That's the motivation of the group that is pushing for this. And I'm not going to get partisan here, but most people, if they look at it, they think it's not a big deal. But if you have a lot of cards, it, it could be a big deal. Yeah. I think at least the one specific scenario that I think where it matters is even if you have a bunch of cards, but if maybe they haven't appreciated that much, it might not be as big of a deal. I think it's where you've gotten cards and they have appreciated more than you imagine. And there is that large gain. And that's where people really need to know what they have. I also think it matters, do you have someone to give your cards to? Is there someone to step it up for? Whether it's a son or a daughter, or maybe you don't have someone. So I think those are considerations too, but make sure you are or not in that category. I've had a lot of appreciation that I didn't expect over time. And now it's like, well, there's a major strategic decision that needs to get made and that can really benefit. So it even affects you in your forward planning. I don't think you're doing estate planning in any huge way right now. But if I ask the question a different way, and I just say, Eddie, you're my son now for the right. this 15 minutes. Right. And my son, would you rather have this $100 card that I got for zero that with stepped up basis, it's going to, if you sell it for a hundred, you get the hundred dollars. Okay. Because there's no gain because I, you inherited it and, and it was stepped up in basis. Right. Or would you rather have $72 right now? Because I'm going to sell the card for a hundred dollars I'm going to pay the $28 capital gain collectible tax, and I've got $72 left over. I'm going to give you the $72. I think a lot of people would say, give me the $72. If the stepped-up basis 
is taken away than I think almost anybody is. Yeah. The money in hand. Would you agree? I would agree. And actually, you just raised a good point I hadn't thought about before the present value of money versus the future value of money. And that's also a uh, consideration, especially you don't know when that future interest would vest in the cards. I think that's a really good point. But what makes cards more nuanced than that is there's emotional attachment to the cards. Do you want to wait and have the card later and take care of it? Or you just want to keep owning it and, and have the basis step up again after you pass away. Yeah, the, the, the present value of a dollar, you think a dollar today is the same as a dollar tomorrow. Well, I assure you it wasn't that way in 1980 and 81. A dollar today was 85 cents. You know, the inflation was 18%. So the dollar is kind of depreciating when you have all this inflation and we may be heading into some inflation. So that would exacerbate this problem if the stepped up basis is taken away. In fact, that might be what is being considered because the Congress is looking at at increasing tax revenues. The problem is people change their behavior. And um, I think all of us have heard, don't sue me on this, Eddie, but there are a lot of people when somebody dies, there are small items in the inheritance that are probably in an illegal sense are bypass probate. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that some jewels that the mom uh, you know, gives to the daughter, some jewels or some gold coins or something, and they're not declared. That's frankly illegal. But it's frequently done. And cards could be like that. The problem is that there's whistleblower situations with the IRS. And now there's digital evidence from the bragging and flexing that people do about the cards that they have or their dad. I had the episode with Gabriella a few weeks ago, and she said, which I hadn't heard this, her dad had been a stealth collector for 30 years. Wow. And now when everything got real bad, then now he came out and said, but you can imagine that there aren't that many stealth collectors. So if people know by Facebook or other Instagram, other social media, that you have these cards, the IRS is going to take the position that your basis is zero. And without the stepped up basis to say, I don't know what my grandfather paid for these, but when I inherited them, they are valued now at what they're worth at that time. And that's great. So this could be a big deal for some of these people that have bigger collections. Yeah, I agree. That was the reason why I emailed you. When I saw, you know, I was following the potential tax policy and then it became legislation. But to me, there's a lot of content out there in the card community, but I hadn't seen anything about this. And I was like, this feels very important for people to consider and think about and at least make a decision on what their own personal view about it is as to it relates to their collecting. It's perceived as being a tax on the rich. I I think it extends farther than that, but usually those kind of uh, issues when they're presented that way, there's a lot more poor people in middle, let's say middle class or lower middle class that say, hey, what's the big deal? It, It doesn't affect them. The problem is that when you look at it from a collector lens, sports card collector, you know, that's not true. There are a lot of people that are salt of the earth that that have nice collections And even if their net worth is under the estate planning pass-through guidelines, when they pass it through, if there's no stepped-up basis, their heirs have a problem when they go to sell. So it's going to affect more people than they think, yet Congress generally tries to represent the people. Most of the people, I'm afraid, are going to be in favor of eliminating because it's a loophole. You you don't have to pay the the capital gain. It's That stepped-up basis is eliminating that. So it's not a pay me now or pay me later. You you don't have to pay. You're right. I think it really is something that affects everyone. If you imagine a middle class person who maybe lived in their house their whole life and a house was bought for $2,000 a hundred years ago and how it's worth considerably more, that's a significant savings to that middle class person. So from all different lenses, it definitely affects people of all walks of life, for sure. The people that are in favor of this are going to say, even the people it affects, it's a good problem to have because it means you're getting some inheritance and uh, you're going to have to pay tax on it when you deal with it, but you shouldn't get a completely free lunch. You're still getting a discounted lunch, but it's a free lunch if the stepped up basis is in place. You're you're getting it like free and clear. The home thing, at least they put in, I think you get part of your gain, you you get a one-time capital gain exemption 
Mm, okay. when you sell a home. But collectibles, I'm not sure. Here's another interesting thing. As attorneys get involved in this is that I'm not sure there's a lobbying effort on behalf of collectors or collectibles in Washington, D.C., where all the lobbyists are. Maybe a collectible and rally in some of these fractionals, because this would impact them. Because again, there's a real track record there that if there's any run up in some of these things, anything that has an appreciation would be affected by this. Yeah, that's a great point about the, the, the no lobbyists for the cards, because not only is, does this one law, the stepped up basis affect significantly card collectors, but there's a targeted tax at collectibles. So right. there's really multiple things out there that, and I guess there weren't before, I guess it was just the Tops and Beckett you know, years ago were the main companies. But now I think with these additional companies that are big, like PSA and the fractionals, and there's a lot more established companies that really should think right. about doing some of those efforts that are making headlines in the wall street journal because of uh, for new rounds of funding and valuations and and acquisitions it's too much on the radar i'll tell you one disappointment eddie which is okay. when i started this is that in the tax law how it's expressed i don't know if you've read it but and i haven't read it exhaustively but basically on the special collectibles capital gain rate it mentions art and uh, gold coins and stamps and th- and you know what Sports cards are in the et cetera <laughs> and, the, and other things like that. I'm wondering when that was written, maybe we were slipping under the radar, but I don't think we are anymore. I think there's too much publicity that this has been just a fabulously performing alternative quote unquote asset. It affects me. It didn't affect you in the transaction of your dad's stuff because you had the stepped up basis. Right. Yeah. It was the stepped up basis. Right? But it, it could have. Correct. I've been audited before several mm-hmm. times and I, I come out clean. I'm certainly not going to do anything that's illegal, that's <laughs> punishable <laughs> by incarceration or uh, anything like that. So I've kept receipts, but it's hard to keep documentation from cash purchases especially if it's contemporaneous. Otherwise, your basis is going to be considered to be zero. But I have checks for a set of uh, hockey cards from the 60s that I have a check from the early 70s that I paid $6 for the set. Okay, at some point I looked it up and this was 10 years ago or so, the set was worth $600. So $6 to $600. So that basis is 1%. That's just, okay, but it's gotten worse because now there are cards, there's a card in that set that is probably worth $600 all on its own based on the grade that it got. So with the advent of grading, it's all crazy. Okay. If I die and pass that on without stepped up basis, it's all gain. Yeah. All gain. The average person who's not a serious collector that's looking to have a world-class collection would rather have a world-class collection of Ben Franklin's <laughs> right. and yeah. other kinds of things, even at a discount. So I think collectors behavior will change if the stepped up basis is taken away, especially older collectors. And the young guys may say that's good. It's going to get cards back into the float, more accessible. But I don't know. It affects me. I'm trying to gently, quietly, slowly reduce my stuff and and gradually put cards that are not as important to me into the hands of people that appreciate them more. I'm so hopeful that this is academic exercise, that nothing happens in our lifetime lifetime on behalf of not just us, but other collectors. Best advice for everyone, just to understand that this relates to everyone. If they intend to you know, buy and sell cards at some point, either sell yourself or it gets sold after you pass. Read about it and, and talk to people and make a decision for yourself about what you know, your mission statement is for your co- collection and, and how stepped up basis fits into your mission and goals. It's pretty important. And obviously, you know, read the news and follow what goes on in Washington. I, I think there's going to be increased tax scrutiny on our hobby. Everybody out there ought to, you know, to follow the law, do the right stuff. You're on dangerous ground if you're cutting corners and if you don't have documentation, the presumption will be against you. The IRS, you're guilty until proven innocent. Not fair, but that's when in tax court. I th- is that the case? Because it seems to me when the IRS comes after you, you're almost guilty until proven innocent. And I didn't study the tax courts quite so much, but I think there probably would be some pretty high burden as far as documentation. Their presumption is that if you don't have the documentation, then your base is here. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, listeners. Be back again tomorrow with another episode. The man in the house of cards.